Hello YouTube, this is Zoo Tycooner Steve, and welcome to episode 4 of our Reart Park. Today we're going to be building an exhibit with the Upland Moas. So I guess we're still staying in extinct Australian animals, but instead of a marsupial this time, we're going to be building really big, scary, mean bird-like things. And we're going to be putting it in this area right here, sort of on the opposite side of the dodos, just north of the... Uh, place where we put it in our thylacines last time, so I think it's going to turn out really well and be a lot of fun here, and here we go with the speed build. Uh, so Upland Moas, let me go ahead and give you a little bit of information for them. Um, I've actually uh, known about them for a while now, even when I was a little kid, uh, just to let you into a little insight of the glamorous life that is a uh, person who makes Zoo Tycoon 2 videos online. Uh, I'm also somewhat of a nerd, just just slightly, in that um, I'm really into like uh, mythology and folk tales and things like that. And I did that even as a little kid. And one of the very early books that you read when you start getting into that seems to be the 1001 Nights or the Arabian Nights or 1001 Arabian Nights, depending on the translation. And one of the largest stories, probably the largest story in there, uh, is the story of Sinbad the Seaman. And uh, there's a point in it where Sinbad, the land man, is talking to Sinbad the sea man. It gets confusing because they're both named Sinbad and it's on purpose. But at uh, uh, one point, the Sinbad the sea man is talking about uh, all these strange and weird animals that he's encountered. And uh, some of them are very clearly fictitious and some of them are very clearly real. Uh, for example, one of the uh, unbelievable animals he describes is a camel what has two humps. Amazing. Uh, but he also talks about these huge uh, flightless birds that he's encountered. And the footnotes for the edition I had um, had a comment that he was either maybe talking about an elephant bird, which seems unlikely because of uh, when the elephant birds went extinct, or, but uh, more probably uh, upland moas or something like that from the Australian or uh, Oceania islands, I guess you could have been something else, or related species. Um, and the reason they uh, sort of fabricated or uh, postulated that was because uh, the average person, they said, uh, hearing about the Arabian Nights would probably have been more familiar with ostriches or something. So they thought it might be like these huge upland moas, which uh, went extinct again during the uh, time when human beings could have interacted with them and known about them, but uh, weren't around anymore. It's also possible they were just, like, talking about an emu or something. But uh, that's when I first heard about them, so I've been slightly curious ever since, and I've decided that this would be a perfect place to put them in in our zoo. So we're going to go with kind of just a simple display here. Uh, just kind of a little barn for them in the background. A uh, little white building here is going to be for our zookeepers. And then we're going to try to encourage them to strut around that uh, open area as much as possible. Now, um, being uh, retates, they are probably pretty dangerous. Um, there's a reason why they don't like to let you get very, very close to ostriches and emus at the zoo, or cassowaries, because they will kick you with those big, powerful legs, with those big, powerful claws, and you're not going to have a good day. So we're not going to be able to allow people to get right up front and, like, pet them. But uh, I want you to have a pretty good view of these really magnificent creatures that we're bringing back today. And you can see here, I'm just kind of trying to make a little nest area for the barn here. I'm trying to use these the pegs more and more. Uh, I've previously only used them as kind of like supports when I have uh, things standing up, but there's really a lot you can do with them if you just use your imagination. So here I'm just trying to sort of create little stalls for the two different uh, nests I wanted to put in here. I, ultimately, I think I'm going to end up deleting one because it looks kind of funky looking at it from the uh, guest view of things. Uh, so that's not quite bueno, but unfortunately the nests are still stuck on the grid, so I can't get them exactly where I want them. But uh, this is a good idea for any of you that are trying to set up stalls and you don't have anything quite right, or you need them to be slightly off the grid um, instead of perfectly lined up with the uh, fencing. 
where you'd have to put the fences, I guess is what I'm trying to say there. But we'll go ahead and put this on with a nice little roof here. Do -do -do. And then I'm going to leave a little bit extra hanging out there, because my plan is to put like a little uh, place for a uh, little entrance awning, I guess is the way I should put that. Just a nice little entrance awning. I'm going to put this thatched roof in. I really like this thatched roof. I try to use it as often as I can. Um, and here we go. I'll just stretch this out here. Original idea. Kind of uh, make it a little more fancy by making a little triangular roof here. Although, as you'll see in a moment, this is going to be the bane of my existence. Trying to get this stupid piece of... Uh, edging here to go to the right spot. Come on. It's frustrating just watching it back. Come on. Come on. Come on. You got this. You got this. Get in there. Get in there. You've got this. Focus. Focus. Aha. And you can see I ended up just getting so super frustrated I just kind of deleted the thing in the way and then rebuilt. Like that. <laughs> so that's how, that's how I avoid trying to pull my hair out which I assure you is long and illustrious. <laughs> Alright. And then these wooden panels here, for some reason, weren't working quite right. Oh, okay, I went to the post here. This is what I traditionally use those posts for, just kind of make it look like it's holding things up. Um, always a good idea to make it look like your things are not defying gravity, because usually you don't see gravity-defying events at a zoo. Just, you know, that's been my experience at least. pay no attention to the antivirus thing that just popped up. It was totally just doing a regular routine thing. Seriously. Okay. And then I'm going to play around here. It took me a while before I was able to figure out exactly how I wanted that look, but you can see how that uh, the nest on the right there was very visible um, from the guest area, and so I decided just to kind of take that out. So we'll only have one nest, but that's okay. We'll won't have that many animals in here, so it won't look too, too crazy to only have one nest at a time. And that's how we're going to go here. And eventually I decided, uh, just because I didn't like there being this. And here's something weird that happens. I'm still not sure what occurred this, but for some reason I couldn't walk straight underneath. So I tried, like, you'll see here I'm deleting the under area. And I'm going to try to just go ahead and do a floating railing in order to get that illusion. But for some reason, the floating railing wasn't working either. So obviously, I put something down there that affected it. I'm not entirely sure what. Even watching this back, I'm just checking to see if I could find out what I had done wrong, but I couldn't. So I ended up just putting in a second door here for the zookeepers instead of trying to fight against the game that obviously wanted me to fail. So I just dropped in a little door there, and I don't think it's a, any major problem. Still looks pretty good. And now, for some reason, I can walk underneath as soon as I put the door in. So I think the magic was putting in the unnecessary door, and then it became unnecessary. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's how it works sometimes. But, uh, okay, we'll go ahead and move off, and then I just put in the tank here so I could close and open that if I so needed to. But now we'll go ahead, and you might have noticed earlier I put in that uh, white wood fence border, just uh, we are going to go back and decorate that area today. But since these are upland moas, I figured I had to put in some larger rocks. And once we put in the larger rocks, then we're obviously going to want to put in the foliage that would collect around those rocks. And eventually I went with our old standbys here, the small birches. I think these look really good. And the maples that go with them. That's a really good one-two color combo with different heights. So uh, I'm kind of bullish on that. And these are these ferns that uh, I started with the thylacines exhibit. Uh, I figured, you know, these are still Australian animals, so it would be okay if they had a similar looking habitat in some ways. Plus, I really, really like how those ferns uh, make your background kind of disappear, as if um, instead of your animals running into fences, they're kind of running into deeper jungle or deeper forest or whatever. 
but then we'll start dropping these big ferns. I recommend using these ferns as much as possible. They look great pretty much everywhere, except maybe a desert. Um, but they've just got a nice variety that you can put through and find some things that just really kind of make yourself light up. And throw one of these guys down, and these guys here. And then I'm going to go ahead and alter the terrain. Again, these are upland moas, so I wanted to make it look like there were some hills and stuff in their environment. Ultimately, I'm going to have to do a little bit of smoothing just because of the way they were blocking the view. I do want people to be able to see our beautiful upland moas here. And then we'll just extend this rock formation out to make it look a little more natural. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Put down some food and water to encourage our moas to come outside, walk around, even a big ball for them to kick. As I mentioned before, uh, these type of birds usually very powerful lakes that uh, kick. Uh, despite what you might have heard about ostriches hiding their heads in their sand, they're actually very aggressive, uh, like all of these uh, uh, retates, I think is what th these type of birds are called. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right, but uh, it's something like retate. Um, those are the large birds that uh, cannot fly. So we'll go ahead and put it down there. Basically, it's the big bird that looks like a dinosaur. Uh, since dinosaurs were feathered, it actually looks, or at least some theropods were feathered, uh, they actually probably look a lot like dinosaurs actually looked. So, uh, despite what you saw in your textbooks way back in like the 80s or 90s, uh, this is what dinos look like. And we'll drop in our juniper bushes. Take that, Jurassic Park. I'm bringing the truth today. Looking good, looking pretty good. A few from our dodos here. Oh, we're going to want to fill in that area. And, um, there we go. We'll just grab some more plants to sort of backfill there. We'll grab these nice blue plants here. I use blue plants at the entrance, so I feel I have a license to uh, go ahead and fill those in. And uh, now this is the point where I remembered I had that problem last week, or uh, last episode. You can tell how often I film these. I had the last episode, too. Um, so we'll go ahead and fill the blues in there. And I wanted to just kind of find something nice to decorate this area here. I decided on one of these nice big ponds fountain thingies. And we're also going to spruce it up a little bit more by kind of filling in it with some of these coastal rocks, which are pretty much the same color, so they're going to look just natural there. It looks more like it was custom tailored for that specific area, which is great. Put a nice big English oak in that area that's sticking out and fill it in with some grass, make it look a little more natural. Beautiful, beautiful. And this way it doesn't look like we just kind of have a big gaping area where we forgot to do anything with our zoo. And we'll put in some juniper bushes here. And we'll make this, uh, I came up with the idea of putting in the gate here for our zookeepers. Just to make it look like um, this is sort of a special area for them. I'm trying to do this more and more as you make it more and more practical by building in like back alleys and uh, things like that. And we'll just go ahead and let the grass grow a little bit wild there. No definite place to go. I will put some food and water inside the barn to encourage our upland moas to go into there as well. Let's lay down a path for our zookeepers. And another door so our zookeepers can get into this exhibit. In effect, we need one more door so they can get from their area to the barn. Fantastic. I feel like I've spent a lot of time pre-planning where I put doors in these games, but uh, if you want your exhibits to come out the exact way you want them to, you kind of have to. you got to take that moment to figure out the logistics. And uh, once I started doing that, I became a much better zoo tycooner, so I do recommend that to you, the listener at home. Learn to pre-plan your exhibits like that. Uh, it's going to save you a lot of trouble and heartache in the end. Unless, of course, you end up, you know, putting in an awning that prevents you from walking under until you put it in a necessary door, and then, then I can't help you. Can't explain that one. All right, and we'll just continue the path here. Kind of looping it out. Uh, do do do. I do try to uh, use the non-curved paths that are right against non-curved fences, just so there's not that little overlap there. And just take a look around. Mostly happy. I don't know if I want to make a, like, 
make it so you can walk completely around the Upland Mower exhibits or not, but I did decide that I kind of wanted to put in a little guest area here. Just a place for benches and uh, things like that for you to sit, get a better, happier look. Um, and I decided that I was going to make it look uh, a lot like that uh, guest area we did around the dodos, just to kind of bring the park together a little bit more. Uh, so it's not going to be an exact copy of that, but it's going to have that same sort of uh, look and feel to it. So it does make our zeal hold together a little bit better, which I'm all for. And of course, the custom policy of wrapping the white building set around with this dark brown, just to give it that nice little pop. Sound effects, wave of the future. Throw in these beautiful maple trees. I like that it generated two different shades there, that's always nice. And back it up with some nice pretty juniper bushes. We'll grab these lamp posts, and I did that backwards, I realized immediately after putting them, the lamp post should really be on the outside. Perfect. And this is going to be sort of a less built up, less fancy thing, because I don't have an upland moa statue to hide behind, but uh, still, it's going to be pretty good. I'm going to be happy with this. Uh, let's go ahead and put in some receptacles there, so it's not just a big blank space. And we'll curve the path a little bit more like that. Yeah, I'm liking that. Um, and I'm not sure what I want to do with this area here. Um, maybe I want to put in a restaurant? Or a smaller exhibit? Hmm. I'm just trying to figure out how much room I have here. Let me do some quick measurements. One, two, three. And if I did that there... Uh, if I did two by two, um, okay, you know what, I'm not going to mess around with that this episode, we're just going to leave it blank for now, let's go ahead and, uh, I don't like how that path ends, let's make a little loop around area here, just to kind of bookmark that for the future, let us know where we are going with that, and we'll fill in a little more of the grass here, a couple more trees, where is the bur oak, there we go help give us a little bit more uh, variance. Uh, I don't know if, again, I'm going to build a path straight through. So for now, we'll just go ahead and sort of juniper where that fence ends so you can't see the ending of the fence. And we'll put in a Moa Keeper. You are assigned to all three of these areas, Mr. Moa Keeper. And finally, let's go ahead and put in some upland Moas. And so let's... Uh, Make it so Simbad the Seaman is not a liar. We wouldn't want that. Go ahead and drop this down. And I think we're all good. Yep, yep. Let's go ahead and do our final walkthrough. So you can see we're right here, uh, back at our dodo exhibit, where our dodos are. Oh, they're, they're dodos. They're playing around there. So I'm uh, starting here so you can see the path to the right, how we've built it up here. And uh, we'll fall through past our thylacine exhibit. How are our thylacines doing? Uh, I don't see any right now. But we'll continue around here. You can see that's our zookeeper entrance right there. But uh, we'll wrap around. Someday, I'm sure there will be something in front of us here. But for now, let's take a look at that little uh, fountain. Oh, the zookeeper came out. There's a keeper entrance. So around the fountain, and we'll go up here. And oh, there, I see one. I see one. Do you see it? See, it's happy. It likes its exhibit. And frankly, I like the exhibit too. I think that came out pretty well. That um, you can get, yeah, here's a really nice view of them here, which is what I was hoping for. Let's zoom in, see if we can't grab a picture of these pretty, pretty birdies with their big, big ball that they can kick as if they were fighting. And let's see here, yep, yep. And we'll go around here to the place where it kind of just disappears. But let's check out the guest area real quick. I do think that that uh, it's so similar to the dodos, like I said, but it's a little simpler, which makes sense. Uh, I'm not going to get exact repeats of it every time, but you could sit there and still see the upland moas pretty well. So let's go ahead real quick and just check out the zookeeper area, uh, which obviously we would go through this little path here. Slightly overgrown. Uh, we'll go in. 
We have to... Oh, we gotta walk through a little bush there. That, that's okay. I'm not gonna worry too much about that. Let's see our computer and our notes, and... Oh, I realize now that I've turned the uh, ceilings off. Let's go ahead and change that. Okay, let's, let's see what this looks like when it has a roof atop it. I think that might be a little more realistic if it's not a transparent roof. Look at that ceiling. Beautiful. And we'll go through this door here. And yep, of course they can walk out. The awning making this unnecessary door unnecessary. But uh, that's okay. That's okay. Well, I'm, I'm going to use it. That way it's not completely necessary. I'm going through it. And we can come out here. Let's see. Our, you know what? I'm going to go out from under the awning just because I can. All right. So, you can see, we got here, we can see our Moa's pretty happy. Um, yeah, get that water. Fantastic. All right, so that is our Upland Moa exhibit. It's one of the more simple ones, but I think we did a good job dressing it up, making it look really nice. Uh, I think those big rocks do help give us a very uh, sort of mountainy, high area feel. So, all about that fits well into that space we allowed it for it, so I'm going to call this one complete. I want to thank you all so much for watching this with me today. If you liked it, be sure to like it, and also be sure to comment and subscribe below. Thank you for spending your time with me today, and I hope you have a great rest of the day.